I guess it's bring your friends to work day. <laughs> that was dumb. That, that was dumb. Every tool is a hammer. Unless it's a screwdriver, then it's a chisel. <laughs> we need a torch. Hate that nut. I'm not, we're not doing that. Because huh. it ain't built till it's overbuilt. We got a big day planned. We're going on tour, selling bottling machines, which means we have to go to breweries, which is nice. I like beer. <laughs> and then it's also, at the end of it all, it culminates with a dead Lufkin tour where we're gonna gather up a busted tombstone and bring it on home for some repairs. You can just take a tombstone? Yeah, you just take them. Nobody cares. Ah, uh, yeah. I supposed out. to? Right. You haven't looked into this, have you? <laughs> Was I supposed to ask somebody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we are at our next stop. Oh boy, I'm not going in there. Hey you girls, don't forget to take your clothes off before you go in. We made it to the big city of Chester, New Hampshire. We're after that gravestone right there, which is smashed to pieces and has been for, oh, on a hundred years or so, I would guess. It's kind of weird stopping at all these breweries and not being able to drink beer, but we had to put 190 miles under the wheels to get here. So here we are. Only seven and a half hours, 15 breweries, and 12 and a half minutes to you, do what you came to do. Have you talked to the police or anything to make sure this is okay? I mean, as you know, we met local law enforcement when I ran the stop sign coming into town. He didn't seem to think it was weird that I was here to take a gravestone. No. He's probably setting up a sting operation right now. He probably is. <laughs> Did I get on the witness protection program? Oh. Wit witless? Yeah, you're on it. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> Not too deep. Is it all there, Dave? Yeah. Uh, you're new at this, right? Never did it before. You don't think you could have found an easier one to maybe start with? A lot of times they only break in one place. That wasn't 200 miles from home? Yeah. Doesn't seem like something I would do. Yeah. <laughs> so there it is. That's Sarah Lufkin, my five greats grandma. I mean, that's not her. <laughs> that's her in that general area over there. But that's her stone. Somebody tried to fix it at one point. These are brass screws. And there's plates on the other side, but they didn't, they didn't work. Or maybe it, maybe that did work and it tipped over and that piece broke. 
who knows but it's all there you can even see at the bottom where it put in went into the slot and i think the i think the base is buried here we'll do a little exploring in the cemetery see what we find well, there may be a piece in there oh yeah there is off the bottom could be pop it out with your screwdriver chisel Gotta be about done settling, I would say. It's still pretty level. Bring a level, Dave? No. We got some work to do before we need a level. <laughs> yeah, slots there, it's clean. Piece cake. Luckily, you know how to fix the gravestones, Dave. Huh. Uh, I'm gonna have to watch some YouTube videos. <laughs> it's gotta be on there. It's about to be. If you come out of the graveyard and walk into the gas station looking like this and tell them you want to wash your hands, I wonder what they do. About to find out. Yep. So the two graves we're looking at here, uh, the one that's still standing is my five greats grandfather, Stephen Lufkin. Uh, Stephen was born about 1733. Um, he was a private in the Revolutionary War. He died in 1808. Like I said, we're in Chester, New Hampshire, which is a pretty small town, but they are doing a really good job in this cemetery, especially with marking graves of soldiers. This is Revolutionary War soldier, and they they not only have the flag and the marker, but they have this plaque here. The reason we're here is to gather up the pieces of the stone of Sarah Choate Lufkin. Now, Sarah and Stephen were both born in Massachusetts. Uh, he served in the Army of the Revolution when they were still there, and then they moved to Chester, New Hampshire to live out their days. She died in 1888. And if you go to that area in Massachusetts, there's a Choate Island, there's a Choate Bridge, and there's uh, a couple of roads with the Lufkin name, and there's a Lufkin Point. So I think both families were, were large families there. Uh, and then Stephen served in the military, and then I believe came to what's a pretty quiet town here to live out the rest of his days. Yeah, I got some crud cleaned off. The rest of that is, is biological stuff, which I'll spray with D2 cleaner when I'm finished uh, with the repair. And then it should it should turn it white again after a couple months. Um, what that is is the roots of of lichen and moss that are that kind of drill themselves into the pores of the stone. Um, so you clean the the stuff off the surface, but it leaves you with that dark color. So that D2 cleaner, which is the only kind of cleaner you're supposed to use on gravestones, uh, that will work its way up in there and kill those roots, and this, the rain will kind of flush them out of there, you know, out of the pores of the stone, and it makes the color go back to white again. It also keeps it from growing for a while. Anyways, um, I got it clean. I removed some some mortar that someone had done some repairs with below below grade at one point they tried to maybe it was tipping they tried to shim it up or something um 
And I got it clean. You can read it now in memory of Mrs. Sarah, wife of Mr. Stephen Lufkin, who died June 27, 1888. Aged 46 years. I can't quite read his epitaph. It's too soon we're something. There's a couple things about the stone that that strike me right away. <laughs> First of all, whoever did that mechanical repair, I'm glad they did it with brass. It was all brass. Even the straps of metal on the back were brass. So there was no corrosion. If that had been steel, then when steel rusts, it swells. And they knew that, obviously. So um, so when steel rusts, like those bolts through, through the holes, when they rusted, they would have swelled up and split. Guaranteed every one of those holes would be blown out and we'd have a much bigger mess. So that was good. Um, another thing's interesting, and it's on all of these stones of this age, really, um, is that the woman's identity is very closely linked to the man's. This is Mrs. Sarah, wife of Mr. Stephen Lufkin. It doesn't even say, you know, Sarah Lufkin, wife of. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting, but that's the way it was. Um, and this stone has, I think they, it's like a willow tree on top. There's only a few... When you walk around an old cemetery, maybe, maybe you don't do that, but uh, you'll see only a few different symbols on tops of headstones, and they kind of repeat They're different versions of the same thing. But one of them is a willow tree. One of them is a creepy guy's face type of thing, skeleton face. Um, if you know what this means, I don't know what it means. I probably can just Google it, but if you know anything about old gravestones, comment. I don't know if you can even see it very well. It's just a willow tree, I guess. Um, if you know what that means, let me know. I think at one point this stone was just broken straight across here, which is really common break, I guess, for stones. Um, so they, they strapped it here and strapped it here, which probably held it for a while, but uh, not too long. And then I think... This is one of the drilled holes right here and probably got water in the hole and froze and popped this off and maybe, you know, when that let loose, maybe the weight of it caused this break to come also or something. But anyway, uh, she broke. It's in pretty bad shape. There's a lot of material missing. You know, some of these cracks aren't just cracks. They're actually missing material. So I'm, I sent a video to the folks at Atlas Preservation, which is the place where you want to go. Their website has their contact info. If you have questions about gravestone repairs or anything like that, maintenance even, cleaning, they've got, they sell all the supplies, even the brushes and stuff, everything you need. They sell them as kits. So if you just want to maintain a stone that you, you know, of a family member or something, they can sell you a little kit. You can take care of it um or they they sell you know bulk supplies too if you're responsible for a cemetery or whatever but uh anyways it's all clean i'm gonna let it dry flip it over dry the backside once the grass is dry and move it down cellar and i will work on it as time allows once i get it you know to being out of the weather i can work on it anytime but that's the plan with this stone it's not pretty, as my friend Dave so impolitely put. Kind of a big, kind of biting off a lot here for my first uh, gravestone repair. <laughs> I guess this, I guess is one way to learn, and that's it right there. I got her all dried out, and I got the stone laid out on my workshop down in the basement. And I guess, uh, I guess that's weird. Um, something about this being here and my wife sleeping on the porch. I don't know how long that's going to go on for, but I think I better try to get something done with this as soon as possible. Seems like it's becoming urgent. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's going to do it for now. That's my five great grandma's gravestone and it's laying in my basement. So I gotta, I gotta get at it, but Right now, we're right up to our eyeballs in tractor pull stuff. So if you're interested in that stuff, check out the other videos on my channel about our charity truck and tractor pull. 
it's coming up. I got a week left. So as soon as that's behind me, I'll get going on some of these other projects. But right now, that's got to be the focus. I want to thank you for spending your time with me. I want you to go down and click subscribe if you have not yet clicked subscribe. My channel's all over the place. There's all sorts of different stuff. I get into all sorts of weird things. Uh, there's bound to be something there that you might like. Might maybe just not hate. Whatever. Uh, make sure you tell your friends. Tell them to click subscribe. Make sure you click the bell. Make sure you send me a comment. What the heck is that tree doing on the top of the grave? I don't understand any of this. But for now, I'm out. God bless you. God bless United States of America.